Hello and welcome to Fix More, Waste Less, where I try to fix broken electronics and keep them out of the landfill. Today we have a PlayStation 2 that I purchased as part of a lot off eBay. Testing this one shows that it does turn on, which is nice, but pushing the eject button reveals that the disc tray is stuck. We'll fix, but... Okay, this one. Get a thing on. So the first thing we need to do is get it apart and see why that's happening. This particular console came with the network adapter, which is a nice little bonus, but removing that from the back reveals our first sign of trouble, a bug casing lurking behind the adapter. Now if this console's been infested with bugs, they could certainly jam the disc tray. And at this point, I'm hoping that's not the case, but I'm not too hopeful, to be honest. I need to get it apart more, so flip it over and remove the bottom screws. Now, if you're going to disassemble your own PS2, take care to remember where your screws go. There are often longer screws sprinkled throughout the case, and based on my experience with these consoles, no two are ever alike. Even consoles with the same model numbers, like 39,000 model or 50,000, can have different screw layouts as well as different internals. There's nothing about the PS2 that's too difficult to discover just by taking your time and being methodical in your disassembly, but you don't want to rely on one video or one guy to be your ultimate reference because there may be some slight inconsistencies. With those screws removed, the top case pops off and on this particular model there is no ribbon cable attached to the top case, so that's nice. But taking that off reveals some more of the damage done by the bugs. Now it doesn't look catastrophic, I've seen worse, I've seen much worse as you can see in this video here. But there are a few bugs scattered throughout and some rust on the heat sink that I believe is actually from the roaches. The disc tray is still jammed, so I want to remove the two screws holding down the top cover, as well as some roach casings just lying around. Removing the top cover reveals some more bug parts on the inside, but it also frees the tray to slide forward. Now at first I thought perhaps the bugs were the issue with the tray and that they jammed up the railings or gears, but after messing with the console a bit I discovered even after cleaning out the disk drive that it still remained stuck once the top cover was on. It turns out this white plastic balancing piece is magnetized to help keep it centered above the spindle as the disk spins. Apparently over time it can actually cause the metal piece on the spindle to magnetize as well, creating a stronger magnetic force. This force is so strong that when you press eject and the tray tries to slide down and out, the magnets actually keep it locked in place. The tray tries to move but can't, so it abandons the attempt and slides back into place. My solution was to put a bit of masking tape over the plastic balancing piece to provide a barrier for the two magnets and weaken the magnetic force. This allowed the tray to pull free from the top case and open as it should. So if you do have an issue with your PS2 not ejecting, especially if it's been sitting for a long, long time with those two pieces in constant contact, give that a check. It's a simple little fix. There may be a way to demagnetize the metal on top of the spindle, but I think just creating a small barrier between the two pieces of metal works quite well. Now that the console can eject, we can test it out and see that it does read and play games. It reads a memory card and accepts input from a controller. Everything seems to be in working order and the only issue is that it's, well, still a little bit filthy. I can't rightly sell it like this, so let's get it cleaned up and in better shape. You'll notice this time I was smart and went right for the gloves. I didn't really want more roach grime on my fingers, not after last time. There's a screw between the fan and power switch and one underneath it. These can be a bit different depending on your model. Two more screws hold down the controller port and with those removed, 
the internals can slide out of the top and bottom case. I use a bit of warm soapy water to clean the cases inside and out. Do take care not to scrub the stickers too much if you're trying to keep them intact. This console also has some sticky green stuff encrusted on the outside. I took a dental pick to help scrape that off and it worked pretty well. Um, the internals also need a bit of cleaning. Here I take some isopropyl alcohol to clean the disc tray. You do want to be careful when cleaning electronics um, and use IPA and not water. IPA won't short circuit anything and is non-corrosive. So as we see, even PS2s can be attractive to roaches. They like to get into anything that has a nice warm heat sink to help them lay their eggs. So if you have roaches in your house, there's a good chance they'll make their way into your consoles. Thankfully here the roaches didn't mess anything up other than creating a mess. Typically they'll climb into the power supply and step onto points that they shouldn't, creating a short circuit that zaps them and the system. It can fry the power supply and possibly do something even worse. They also just create a mess. They shed this gunk and defecate everywhere. They make you really hate their existence. Getting into every little crevice is very time consuming, but well worth it to get a clean console and get rid of all the bug legs and shells and stench. IPA is not gonna do anything against that rusty grime, so we're gonna have to hit that with something a little stronger. The power supply is held down by four screws and with those removed, it just pops off and it's pretty dirty. What makes this harder to clean up is that the power supply is an old style through pin circuit board and the bottom where the component wires are soldered on form these very sharp points that just eat away at my cotton swabs and anything else you try to rub over it. But if you take your time to scrub around the pins, you can work your way through it pretty good. Now we get down to the metal casing that needs a little bit of cleaning as well. It has some rust or roach grime on it that I want to get off as best I can. This side's held down by a number of screws. Make sure you keep track of the screws and where they go because it's not always intuitive. You don't want to put this thing back together and realize you missed a screw. I need to remove the fan wire and piece of tape holding the wire in place then the shield can come off and it looks pretty good. There's some dirt and grime along the edges of the board and some on the metal shield, but it looks like they kept most of their nasty stuff to the shield and not the board. Before going too much further, I'll clean around the outside of the board and as, long, as well as the ports and fan. The metal shield on the bottom pops off with a bit of prying. This side touching the motherboard was kind of dusty, but overall clean, didn't have any of that uh, grime and rust on it. But the other side is covered in that stuff and needs a good cleaning. The heat sink pad comes off and needs a good cleaning as well, as does my workstation. Be sure to clean as you go for best results. The best way I found to help clean off that rust and grime is to let the metal pieces soak in some white vinegar. The acid of the vinegar will help penetrate and break up that grime, then you can polish it off. I just used a brush to help clean it off and went back over it with some coarse grit sandpaper that worked pretty well. It's not going to keep the polish on the metal, but it will get rid of most of the grime, which is all I'm looking to do right here. With the motherboard free, I can go over it with some IPA and the toothbrush. I never realized how much cleaning consoles was like being a dentist, but here I am using a toothbrush and dental pick to clean it up. Now the board wasn't horrible, but the brush helps remove some of the lint and roach parts away from the console. If you're going to have the console this much apart, it's not a bad idea to replace the clock battery if you care about such functionality.
And now it's time to put the console back together. You replace the heat sink pad and then place the now cleaner heat sink case on the motherboard. These older consoles are a lot easier to work with than the newer iterations. No special screw heads, not a whole lot of screws holding pieces together, not even any thermal paste. It's all fairly simple really. Here you can see how well the metal shield cleaned up after soaking it in the white vinegar and giving it a scrub. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Be sure to reattach any of the ribbon cables you've disconnected before continuing your assembly. Place the other metal shield over the board. Reinstall the small screws here, being sure to put them back where they came from. You reattach the fan. I put a small piece of tape to hold the cable down like it originally was. The plastic shield goes here, and yes, don't forget all the screws. Include the expansion bay slot, and then the power supply unit goes in. Next up is the power switch and fan assembly along with the disk drive cover. The meat of the console fits into the case, but not before the power switch needs to be attached to the power supply. Then remember that you forgot to clean the power switch, which is disgusting compared to the rest of the console, so give it a good cleaning to get it looking good as well. And don't forget the last screw underneath the power switch. I always forget something, don't I? Now when I was cleaning the case, this hinge for the memory card popped off. It was simple to reinstall. Top case slides back on and there you have it, a working and cleaned PlayStation 2. I thank you for watching. I hope you learned something useful from this video. Please like and subscribe to the channel, it really helps out a lot, and I'll see you next time as we continue to learn how to fix broken electronics to keep them around for future generations.